Camilla Parker Bowles demands divorce. Kate Middleton comforts. Camilla is the second wife of Charles, Prince of Wales, the eldest child and heir apparent of Queen Elizabeth II. Instead of using the title of Princess of Wales, she uses the title Duchess of Cornwall, her husband's secondary designation. In Scotland, she is known as the Duchess of Rathese. In the event of Charles acceding to the throne, Camilla would become a queen consort. However, an official statement issued by Clarence House on the day of her marriage to Charles announced that she would be known as the princess consort. Camilla Parker Bowles demanded a divorce. If so, Kate Middleton may be the one who has stepped in to comfort the heartbroken Prince Charles after allegedly hurling an onslaught of insults at Prince Charles. Sources revealed Duchess Camilla called the Prince of Wales a snivelling coward and a loser who will never rule. The Duchess of Cornwall then informed Prince Charles their tenure marriage is over. According to a January 11 Globe report Camilla Parker Bowles has demanded $175 million as a divorce settlement. Queen Elizabeth must shudder to think. The Prince of Wales could be a twice-divorced king but which is worse a twice-divorced. King Charles or Duchess Camilla crowned queen. Prince Charles is allegedly an emotional mess and begging Duchess Camilla not to leave but Parker Bowles according to Globe had a boost-fueled shocking showdown with the Prince of Wales. Royal sources divulge that Camilla is livid that Queen Elizabeth is conspiring to somehow bypass Prince Charles in favor of Prince William is next in line to the throne. The thought of being made to curtsy to Queen Kate absolutely infuriates Camilla Parker Bowles. Palace sources say that Parker Bowles has gone so far as to declare the marriage a sham. The Duchess of Cambridge knows that is not the way Prince Charles feels at all. Princess Kate doesn't want the Prince of Wales to lose the only woman he has ever truly loved. Royal insiders insist the Duchess of Cambridge has encouraged Prince Charles to beg Camilla Parker Bowles for another chance. One can imagine Princess Kate would be thrilled if Queen Elizabeth pushed the Duchess of Cornwall aside. Kate Middleton would probably love to help Duchess Camilla pack up her possessions and leave. Perhaps Camilla Park Bowles, she toned things down a bit maybe find some serenity in the gardens at the couple's Scottish country home. Prince Charles isn't going to be skipped over in favor of Prince William and Kate Middleton the only thing that may keep the Prince of Wales from the throne is old age if Queen Elizabeth's lives is long. As the Queen Mother Charles will be approaching 80 when Crown King come back. So the thing is that Camilla Parker was infuriated at Prince Charles and she said that Prince Charles was not good enough, not capable enough and not competent to become the king. Camilla was infuriated because she thought that Queen Elizabeth may be conspiring to make Prince William the next king instead of Prince Charles. She thinks that Queen will bypass Charles in the favor of Prince William. According to the rules of succession, Prince Charles is next in line for the thrones but there are conspiracies being designed to somehow put him back and bring Prince William to take the throne. As Camilla is the only one woman that Prince Charles has truly loved and he can't afford to leave her but still it is said that Kate asked Charles to beg the Duchess of Cornwall to give him another chance. Camilla Parker Bowles, an explosive biography of Camilla to mark her 70th birthday next month lifts the lid on her affair with Charles. Yesterday we revealed how the prince was driven to the brink of a breakdown by his marriage to Diana. Today she tells how Diana menaced Camilla before two unprecedented television interviews to blew apart their marriages and rock the monarchy. This is the third extract of Camilla's biography written by Penny Jenner by the end of 1986. The time Camilla came back into Charles's life initially as a platonic friend Diana had already produced an heir in a spare. Diana was nobody's fool, she soon realized she could feed stories to the newspapers, herself using them as a way of punishing her husband while controlling what they said about her. Eventually she found out that Charles was seeing his former lover again and although Diana was having affairs of her own, she grew increasingly obsessed with the woman she considered her rival. In 1989 the princess famously confronted her at a party thrown by Lady Annabel Goldsmith at her home in Richmond. Camilla said I would just like you to know that I know exactly what is going on between you and Charles, I wasn't born yesterday. For her part Camilla was furious that Diana should have made such a public scene, 
Two years later the princess agreed to be the prime source for the book about her life. Diana her true story, when it was serialized in a paper and later published it, which caused a furor you can listen to. Our selections of this book in our channel just check out our playlist called Diana's Secret Tapes. Suddenly the whole of Britain was reading shocking revelations about Diana's suicide bids, her bulimia her husband's indifference to her, his defects as a parent and his obsession with Camilla Parker Bowles. Eleven years into her marriage Diana was very angry, very bitter and very unwell. The War of the Waleses was at its height, they were living largely separate lives, both had lovers and Diana who waged war far more effectively than her husband was prepared to do and say anything to damage him. The most important revelation in the book was that she suffered from bulimia, a disease that involves secret binging followed by self-induced vomiting. Such binges are often followed by strong mood swings, expressed as guilt, depression, self-hate and even suicidal behavior. And while the roots of the illness lie in childhood and a disordered family background, uncertainty and anxiety in adult life can provide the trigger. Significantly sufferers can appear to be happy even spending their lives trying to help others. Yet there is rage beneath the sunny smiles, anger that they're often afraid to express. This is why the Morton book was Diana's truth, but may not necessarily have been everyone else's truth. Richard Alort Charles's private secretary, told me the prince and one or two others mentioned in the book were baffled because the stories were true in essence, but most of them had been given a spin which meant they weren't quite like how anyone at the time remembered them be. That is it may from the moment people started reading Diana her true story, life as they'd known it was over for Diana, for Charles, for William and Harry, for Camilla and for the entire Parker Bowles family. The young princes then aged 10 and 8 were boarding at Lunch Rove a boys prep school in Berkshire. Although the people who ran the school tried to shield the boys from newspapers there was only so much they could do. William and Harry couldn't help but hear the rows between their parents or notice that their father was seldom. There however they spent most of their time with nannies who did their best to distract and insulate them from what was happening. The Parker Bowles children on the other hand had been far less aware of trouble on the home front. If asked Tom and Laura would probably have said they had a very happy home life. Both Andrew and Camilla had been discreet about their extramarital activities, always making sure that the children came first. Indeed both their children were blissfully unaware that anything was amiss. The Prince of Wales Sir as they called him was a regular visitor but he always had been. He was Tom's godfather and they both loved seeing him. Their absence for large chunks of the year at boarding school also helped preserve their mother's secret. Plus she was always there for them at half term and in the holidays. Yet now having been an entirely private wife and mother, Camilla was suddenly a household name she was painted not just as a scarlet woman, but as one who had caused the Princess of Wales years of torment and pain. From then on, it became impossible for Camilla to leave her home without being photographed and then the poisonous letters began to arrive on December 9, 1992. Prime Minister John Major announced that the Prince and Princess of Wales had opted for separation but had no plans to divorce. The following month the Sunday Mirror published the transcript of a tape recording that was immediately dubbed Camilla Gate. It was a telephone conversation between Charles and Camilla, recorded in 1989. The sort of late-night chat that should never be overheard, it lasted 11 minutes and was undeniably genuine, but the recording wasn't of one single conversation, it included bits of several conducted on different nights and spliced together. Charles would often phone Camilla late at night no matter where he was in the world, he felt better if he could hear her reassuring voice before he went to sleep. The part of the tape that everyone remembers was embarrassing beyond words Charles was saying, he couldn't bear being without her, he said I'll just live inside your trousers or something, it would be much easier what are you going to turn into Mila? Said with a laugh, a pair of knickers they both laughed oh you're going to come back as a pair of knickers. Oh God forbid a Tampax, he laughed just my luck. Their conversation boosting Charles's confidence telling him he was underestimating himself as usual, showing an interest in his work and making him feel good about himself which no one else did, and he in turn was tender and loving and passionate, telling her how proud he was of her and how her great achievement had been. 
to love him Camilla was branded a marriage record and adulterer while the serially unfaithful Andrew Parker Bowles found himself in the curious position of being the wronged husband. The harassment intensified, Camilla became the butt of lewd jokes, crude cartoons, and lurid headlines. She had disturbing phone calls at all hours of the day and night, she received abusive letters and became a virtual prison alone, for a lot of the time in a big house. In the country with no security life became horrendous not just for her, but for all her immediate family. How anyone comes back from that sort of public humiliation is hard to imagine. Most people would have been crushed by it, but Camilla internalized the pain and presented a brave face. She has a strong instinct for self-preservation. A tendency to put her head in the sand and not think about things that are too difficult. She also has an unerring ability to laugh even in the most terrible of situations, and her family are the same. They closed ranks rallied round and kept her spirits up her mother.